Okay, guys, I am back with FIFA 21 ready to rebuild my first one with a new game. So, and in fact, I have not literally played a minute of this game yet. So, we are, I'm going to be learning on the fly. So, since several of you that watch these videos have, are f from Turkey or fan of the Turkish League, I'm going to start off with a team recommended by a couple of you to do last year, and that's Bashar Shashir, the team that was founded. Uh, about 20, 25 years ago. They won the league last year, but they're not the most popular league in Turkey, team in Turkey. Pardon me. Gotta learn how to speak again, apparently. It's because of the fact that they've been thought to be aligned with the government spending. So, we're gonna take this team who started off this year struggling. They're now up to, I think, about sixth place at the time in this video, but they could not score the first few games. So, we're gonna see if we can take them to the Champions League title here in this First rebuild of FIFA 21. I'm ready to go. So here's the team we're starting out with. Now, I will still try to go after several Turkish players, but I'm not going to be as poignant about it for this first one as I'm still getting used to this game as I've not tried it before. As I see, I don't like the fact I can't see the age on the first page. I have to scroll down to get see it. So, but we're going to try to make improvements. I see getting the right posi players in their proper positions key also. As I plan on using the the adjustment of the position role on this, which I uh, might, but for this first one, I'm trying not to. So, let's see what we can do this team and do in the transfer window. So we start off this first signing of FIFA 21, getting ourselves the goal contender, young Andre Lunin from Real Madrid for a little over 20 million dollars. Welcome to the club, Andre. So a couple of players sold. Junior Cascara is going to Ajax for 6.7 million. Our starting goalkeeper Merrick Gunuk is going to Besiktas for 10 million, and Demba Ba is going to Bournemouth. Back to the Premier League for 1.15 million. So we've signed the central midfielder, young 18-year-old Ryan Gravenberg, the Dutch player from Ajax, for nine million dollars. Welcome to the club, Ryan. So what will probably end up being our final sign for this transfer window. We've signed the young Croatian center back who can also play left back, Josko Gravdiol. From Dynamo Sagra for $5.3 million. We've sold Daniel Alexic to Braga for f just a hair over $3 million. We've sold Alexandra Aparenu to Ajax for th just a hair over $3 million. So, a quick reminder we are in the Champions League this year, and as you see, here's our group. Not, not going to get out of it with Leipzig, Man U, P PSG. But anyways. So that's it for this transfer window. You see our action we've done so far. Pretty busy. So we're going to go January 1st. See how we did in the Champions League and how we're doing the, the Turkish League so far. Okay, like I figured, last in the group. We did take a, a draw against Leipzig, though. In the league, we're not doing very hot. We're sitting in ninth. I mean, pardon me, eighth. But the good news is we're only five points out of fourth place. Was a, a Champions League up spot, I believe. I can't remember because I know they just switched the qualifying spots this year. But we're close. So let's see if we do anything in the transfer window. So we saw Bump Moot. Take them a year to Porto for $3.8 million just before the signing window opened. And since my approval rating was getting low, I needed to do one of my objectives, which was sign a South American player. So we've signed Augustin Ursi from Banfield for $12.7 million. So nobody did any business in this transfer window, so on to the end of the season, see how we finished in the league in the S Turkish Cup. So, we made a strong finish to get out from 8th and finish all the way up in 2nd place, but we were blown out of the water by Galatasaray, 
who only lost one game the entire season. But still, definitely is strong here. But look at that, 10 losses. Wow. But anyways. But this season wasn't completely trophyless. We won the Turkish Cup 3-0 over Galatasaray. Atletico Madrid beat Liverpool win the Champions League. Arsenal beat Villarreal to win the Europa League. Here's a quick look at the stats. Crivelli and Fischka leading the way with Giuliano and goals. So we're going to go to get to Season 2 and get moving on this rebuild. As you see, I have signed a bunch of youth academy prospects to this team, all Turkish. So anyways, on to Season 2. So we start this season off by selling the striker Giuliano to Sheffield United for $34 million. So we made a big signing of signing the Turkish defender Ozan Kabak from Shaka for $43 million. Welcome back to your homeland Ozan. So in an effort to get a little bit younger we've sent Hassan Ali Ka Kaderim to PSV in exchange for the Frenchman Olivier Buscagli for $2.1 million included in the deal. He just came back to us from loan, but we've sold Turkish Sonir Agodou. Uh, oh, forget it. Now he won't try it again. To Wofford for $1.85 million. So we've made a deal and signed the young Spanish striker from Braga. Abel Ruiz for $11.7 million. Another person returning from loan has been sold to Brentford, Miguel Vieira, for $1.3 million. A couple more sales. We sold the Belgium Nasser Chadli to Galatasaray for $13.6 million. And we sold Rafael to Sheffield United for $10.9 million. And we have signed another young possible both star in the making. We signed the Dutch fullback Lucharel Gertruda for 18.5 million from Brighton. And okay, here we are. This is the final qualifying match. We can turn around this 2 1 deficit. We're down to Basel. We will make it to the Champions League again. We are at home, so here we go. Can we win? Yes, we turn around. We're back in the Champions League again for the season. Ruiz, Gravenberch, and Ruiz score twice. There we go. So, he wanted out of the club. There's nothing I could have done to fix it. So, I had to sell Ron Gravenberch to Porto for $14 million. And then I also sold my backup goalie, Vulcan Babacon, to West Brom for 920000 so I probably overpaid for him since I had it. I did not have him scouted beforehand. Uh, some players I was looking for fell through, but we signed Jude Bellingham for twenty-two million dollars. Yeah, I well overpaid him. That's why I get not pre-scouting him, but he's coming to us from Dortmund. Okay, that's the end of what was a very busy transfer window. People coming in and out. I'm going to need to sign my squad name tags just so they can know who th who's who. But anyways, let's see who's in our Champions League group real quick. Oof, we get the defending Champions League champions, Atletico Madrid, Madrid Inter Milan, and Moscow. So, Well, for an improvement from last year, let's finish at least third, and then we can compete in the Europa League. But anyways, let's advance January 1st, see how we did in the Champions League. So... We we at least made what I was hoping to do, which is finish third in the group, with seven points behind Madrid and Inter Milan. So we're getting there. So we're going to go play in the Europa League in the round of 32. And we will face in the round of 32 Club Bruges. So hopefully we can be fortunate make and make a deep run in the Europa League. And in the Turkish League, we are second behind Trapsonspor, two points out of first. So... Let's see if we do any business this transfer window. Yep, nothing this transfer window. It's so the time to go to the end of the season see how we finish up. So, for the second straight year, we finished second in the league, this time behind Trapsonspor. 
but for the second straight year, won the Turkish Cup, this time over Besiktas. Man City won the Champions League over Real Madrid. Lille won o Roma over Roma in the Europa League. Wow, we lost in the round of 16, Real Sociedad. Here's a quick look at our stats in the season. Mr. Fiskia led the way with goals. He's now been with the club at this point, would be, what, 12 years? He's been with the club in real life since 2011. So, again, our offense predicated around our three main guys. And here's a look at our, the way our lineup looks after two years. Slowly making progress. Mr. Fiska actually has gone all the way up to 84, but he is at the age of 32, 33 in that neighborhood. So, but Crivelli's at 81, Kabak 81, Lunin at 82. So we're making progress. So we're going to go to season three. Have to go through the qualifying rounds Champions League again, but we are going to plan to make it into the group, the knockout phase of the Champions League and win the league this year. So let's move on to season three. So we've signed the young German striker from Salzburg, Karim Adeyemi, for twenty million dollars. He's going to be replacing Crivelli here shortly. So, anyways, that's the start of our season three moves. So a few players being sold. Mohamed Demir is going to Royal Antwerp for one point eight five million dollars. Ibar paid the uh, release clause for Enzo Crivelli, our striker, for forty-four point four million. And our backup striker, Frederick Goldbrunson, assigned with Colton for $3.4 million. So with that and a little bit of money from the preseason tournament, I should have about $60 million now in the bank. So I'm going to see if I can make another difference-making player. And there you have it. We have now set up our center-back tandem of Turkish players. We have signed Kaglar Soyuncu who in real life plays for Leicester, but in this game we've acquired him from Bayoun for $59.2 million. There we go, man. So we sold uh, the Australian at Sea Beach to Basikas for $2.35 million. So that was the end of this busy transfer window. That's We did make it through qualifying the Champions League, de defeating Monaco in the last round. Let's see who we have in our group. And it certainly doesn't get any easier year by year. We've got Liverpool, Juventus, and Mulde in our group. So let's advance January 1st, see if we have any chance of breaking into the top two. Look at that. We made it to the knockout stage, finishing second in this group behind Liverpool. That means we beat Juventus twice, of course. Judged by our goal differential, that also means Liverpool beat the crap out of us. So, And our reward for making the round of 16? is we get to play Man City. Yay! But anyways, and we are running away with the Super League. We're, is that, we're almost 20 points up on Besiktas. We've only drawn once this year and that's it. So let's see if we do anything in this win transfer window. If we don't, we'll just go straight to the round of 16 matchup with Man City. So, we didn't do any transfer business, so here we are. We're starting off with the home leg of the fixture against Man City. They got the core of a lot of their team that's currently playing for them there. And then they have Griezmann as attacker. Angelino as left back. So, let's do a sim and see how we fare in this game. The score says... We only lost 1-0. So Griezmann got an early goal for them. But look at that, we only created one shot. Ooh. Anyways. So here we are, playing the away fixture against Manchester City of the Eliad. Uh, we are down one nothing, so we need to, uh, well, we need at least two goals. Not likely, but we got our normal lineup in there, so let's go. Let's see what we can do. And the results... I'm speechless. What? Goal in the 14th minute by Bellingham. They scored with Sterling in the 21st. Vizca scored in the 57th. Bellingham again in the 71st. 
And Griezmann had to be substituted for Luke. They have Lukaku on their bench. Wow, we are off the quarterfinals, people. What an upset. Oh, and our reward of making the quarterfinals is Liverpool, who crushed us twice in the group stage. So as you see, we have our full complement of our lineup. They s still, in three years later, have their trio that they're currently in real life. And they have the back three of the back four and Allison. So, yeah, well, start off the home leg. Here we go. Any prayer? Oh, we did do better than we did in the group stage. We we lost two to three. But giving up three way goals is not pretty. Adeyemi score and Bellingham scores, scored for us. Mane, Salah, and Harry Wilson. So here we are going to Anfield. We've got to somehow make up that deficit. But hey, we pulled a miracle off last round. Can we go back to back? Let's see. Well, we lost 5-4 in aggregate, so we were competitive. That's a good sign. Abel Rees and Adeyemi scored for us. They had Rada and Salah score again. So anyways, we're going to go to the end of the season. See if we can take our first... Super League crown in this rebuild. Look at that. We won our first league title with a unbeaten year. Only four draws. We have done the domestic double, beating Venerbahce in the final of the Turkish Cup. An all Bundesliga Champions League final. Dortmund got the best of the rival by Jürgen in penalties. And Juventus got over their poor Champions League showing by winning the Europa League over fellow Serie A Napoli. And here's the stats for the season. As you see, we got a little bit more balance in the scoring department. And as you can see, the difference between FIFA 21 and FIFA 20 is Visca's uh, an 84 at age 33, which in FIFA 20 he would have already started a decline by now. So here's a quick look at the rest of the stat. Kaveki with 18 assists. So we're looking solid here. So we're going to go on to season number four where we might have aspirations of winning the uh, Champions League. Let's see what kind of budget we get from the office. So we start off with season four with a big blockbuster swap deal. We sent Jude Bellingham to Torino for Eduardo Camavinga, the French wonder kid. Well, I did this because he's not only the same age and he's three overall higher, but more importantly, one of the biggest deficiencies last year is we did have a tendency to get up too many goals, and his defensive stats are far greater than what Bellingham had. So he can help out more with our defense, and he won't be messing much on the front end. So welcome to club, Eduardo. So brought another Turkish player home. Needed a little bit more depth at the striker position. So I brought home Ahmed Kotuchu from Shaka for $18 million. So that's it for that transfer window. Productive, but definitely our slowest transfer window out of the four seasons. So let's go see our Champions League group stage. So we drew a group with Atletico Madrid and Napoli. So... Let's see how we didn't do in this group stage on January 1st in just a moment. So we finished second our group again behind Atletico Madrid, but we advanced around 16. This time we get played Dortmund. I wonder if they kept all their wonder kids that's on their roster. If they did, this could be rough. They are the defending Champions League champions, so... I my guess probably. So not running away the league this year like we did last year. We're actually sit level on points with Besiktas, but we are on top due to goal differential. So let's see if we do anything in this transfer window. So didn't do anything in the transfer window, so we're on to the round of sixteen matchup Dortmund. We're starting with the home leg. As you see they do still have Holland and Sancho, so 
we'll see let's get ready to sim and the final score is going to be a four nothing win a hat trick by Bell Ruiz that's the way you get things started so here we are we're on the second leg with the four nil lead we're just going to sim right away it shouldn't be any drama yeah one nothing win goal by earth z towards the end so off to the quarterfinals for the second straight year so we draw in our quarterfinals real madrid so this should be interesting i am missing yasko gravardo because of too many yellow cards at left back so we start off the home leg against real madrid let's see what the final results will be hopefully we can hold them off uh two nil is loss Goals by Aubameyang, who came off the bench, and Diketara there. I'm sure I screwed that pronunciation up. So yeah, we're going to need a little help here. So we've got a massive deficit we've got to come up with. We've got to find a way to basically score three goals at Real Madrid to win this. Do have the full available lineup, but not looking good. So let's just see. We pull off uh, one nil, one one draws, so... Goal by Bell Ruiz again, so once again we flame out in the quarterfinals, so let's go to the end of the season. So, won the league for a second straight year over Trapson Spore. We crushed Galatasaray to win the Turkish Cup. Atletico Madrid beat their La Liga partner Real Madrid in the finals of Champions League. And Leicester City, the Foxes, defeated Ajax to win the Europa League title. Annabelle Ruiz led our team in scoring with 38 goals on the season, while we had three players multiple with double digits and assists. So that's the end of year four. We're going to hopefully take the Champions League crowd in year five. Going to need to do an upgrade. Mr. Visca is, might need to be put on the bench and brought on as a super substitute uh, but we will see it depends on what kind of money we have see you in season five so we've made the move and it's been pretty much all of my budget so far we have signed Pedri from Barcelona for 58 million dollars the beautiful thing about him is he can be a left midfielder or a central midfielder so depending on how people develop or what I have come open in on the transfer market I can switch them around a little bit so the only signing we have is Pedri it's the other guy it was a free agent signing I made so I could keep track with one of the uh, objectives I needed to do for the club so anyways let's see who's in our Champions League group real quick so we get drawn in a group with Atletico Madrid again. I believe that's the third time in five years. Olympiacos and Leicester City, the defending Europa League champions from the previous season. So anyways, let's see how we do in this group in just a moment. So we won the group for, the, I believe this is the first time we've won a group. I can't remember now. But we finished just ahead Atletico Madrid and Leicester. In the round 16, we face the Spurs. So I literally, after re-signing players for next year, have zero in the bank. So we're going to just go straight to the round of 16 matchup, the Spurs. So here we are for our round of 16 matchup on the road at Tottenham Stadium. So let's go. we got a full lineup. And the result is... 1-1. One, one. Uh, Kane scored a goal and Pedri scored a goal for us in the fifth minute. So here we are home against the Spurs. Uh, we are missing Kabako. He's out due to yellow cards. So that's going to hurt. So well, all we can do is go with it. So here we are hosting the Spurs. Can we advance the quarterfinals? Yes, 2-1 win. Adeyemi and Ruiz once again scored. So our quarterfinal matchup is with the other Spanish giant, Barcelona. And Calvert-Lewin is their striker, in which I remember him 
being their striker with Juventus, I think it was. I remember seeing him earlier in the uh, rebuild. But no Messi, or at least he's not a starter. But we got our our normal starting lineup in the in there. So here we are on the road. Let's see. The results is three two loss. Uh, goals from a Dayemi and Abel Re Reed while Calvert Lewin got a brace and Trent Cow got the other goal. So there we are for the second leg here at home against Barcelona. I guess Calvert Lewin got hurt, maybe? Because Lukaku is in there as a striker, so. But, anyways. We got to make up a goal deficit, but we do have the two way goals. So let's see. Similarly, hopefully, we don't burn out in the quarters. We advance 1 0 win. Ozon with a goal. Hey, look at that. So, in the semis, we draw Manchester United. So, once again, here's our lineups. Everybody's healthy, which is interesting that I, in 21, and I haven't seen a whole lot of injuries, so, which is nice. But, can we do it at home against the United, the Red? Oh, we lost one nil. Indeedy with a goal in the 40th minute. Quick note for next season. He was not liking not getting playing time and not much I could do, so I sold Augustin Ursi to Anderlecht for $64 million, so... That'll be definitely a good start to get a prime player next year if we don't win this season. So here we are at Old Trafford. Got to make a 1-0 deficit. Now, Kovacici got a, two yellows for a red in the last game, so he's out this game, but luckily we do have Ursi on the bench. So here we go. We need to make up that deficit, can we? No, another 1-0 win. We got shut out both games. And Didi scored again for Manchester early on. Oh, well. So on to the end of the season now. So we ran rough shot through the Turkish League this year. We won the Turkish Cup again over a newcomer, and I am about to botch his name, I'm sure, is it? Karagomurk SK? Man U went on to beat Lyon in the finals of Champions League. Leicester City won the Europa League title for the second straight year, but beating Leipzig on penalties. So here's the stats for the season of the goals. So we're going to go in year six now, and I'm fully expecting us to win the Champions League next year with a sale of Erzy. That should give us plenty of money in the bank to make a big signing. Let's see how we do next season. Quick look at the star lineup where they're at right now. See Luna in 93 and most of the back end is around 90. So I told you we were going to make a big move with the money from Earth Seas and we did. We have signed Mason Greenwood to the team for a hundred and twenty five million dollars that's going to be the difference maker I hope so we did sell two players uh, youth academy goaltender Arslan is going to Yanni Mayat support for two hundred thirty thousand and Kareem Fry is going to uh, Gare Maris in the Portuguese league I know I butchered that for three point one million and that'll be it for this transfer window, so we're gonna just going to go straight January 1st see how we did our group of the Champions League. And what was easily the, the easiest group we've had all year in this rebuild, I guess all of a rebuild, we won the group ahead of Bertha Berlin, Roma, and Midgelin. In round 16, we'll face Porto. Rolling over the Turkish league again, but we are giving a lot of goals up considering the quality of our team and the fact we have a 95 goalkeeper. Yep, no business this window, so let's go to the round of 16 matchup, Porto. 
So here we are in the round 16 matchup. Kabak is out. I'm not sure if it's due to yellow cards or injury. I haven't looked. So here we go anyways on the road for the first leg in Portugal. 1-1 one, one draw. A Diemi with a goal for us. Hmm. So here we are at home for the round of 16 fixture. We are again tied 1-1 one, one with Porto. Let's just quickly sum, see if we can advance the quarterfinals. Three no wins. Goals by Glock, Greenwood, and Cam Camavinga. So here we are facing Inter in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Again, no injuries. Everybody's health is good. So let's go out and take on the home leg. And the results are 2-2 two -two draw. Goals by Camavinga. And Greenwood. So here we are for the away leg. We are even on goals, but they do have the two away goals. So more likely we just need to win this matchup. So again, full lineup. Here we go. 2 0 win on the Vic Road. Goals by both Turkish players, Kavici and Kutuchu. That's, we've made it in the semis. So, in the semis, we've drawn PSG. They still have Mbappe there, but not Neymar. But anyways, again, full lineup in this place. We're playing at home to start this fixture, so let's see how we do. 1-1 one, one draw. Goals by Adeyemi, and they had Lucas Digne score for them in the end. So here we are in the second leg away at PSG. We are even on aggregate 1 1, so let's see the results. Hopefully, we can make it to our first finals. At a 2 0 win, two goals by Niemi in the same minute. Well, that been impressive to see, but we have advanced to the finals of the Champions League. So, in the finals, we draw our old pals, Atletico Madrid, who we've seen several times throughout this rebuild. So we're going to see if we can dethrone them and become Champions League champions. No surprises in the league. We won it again. So here's the lineups. We're fully loaded with our usual lineup. Of course they have All Black, the ultimate shot stopper in this game. So let's see the results. Hopefully we can pull out a win. And we do a goal by Suyunchu. Uh, in the 64th minute pulls the victories out. Way to go. Here's a look at our stats for the club. As you see we have main stage from the start of the club. Kaveki in the lineup. And on the bench is the longtime member of the team which since this was 2026 was main feats. Served 15 years for the team. Eden Vizca. Asbuki and Ponk's been here since the beginning. So, there we have it, guys. There's your lineup. Uh, we'll view the cup results in a minute since the finals of the cup isn't played till after the Champions League for some reason. And for the first time in this rebuild, we did not win the Turkish Cup. In fact, it wasn't any of the normal big three. It was won by Denis Silbor over Karakumurak. Oh man. So here's a look at the stats. The uh led by young German striker Adeyemi with thirty seven goals. Ped Kaveki, the long time team team member, had twenty exist. Mr Fiska and now is age thirty six year managed to score four goals and had thirty nine appearances. So as normal, I always give the team one, a chance to defend their title and was a quick re year, so we'll, we will sim the following year and we will see if we can defend our Champions League title and see what we can do. So here's our transactions. We got De Bruyne from Manchester City to take over for uh, Kvecki. Then Mr. Pong got sold to his Sporting CP. Then Manchester City paid the release clause of $422 million 
Rebel Reed, my striker. So, how do you replace a striker like him? You get Mr. Holland from Dortmund. Then the Kaveki wanted out of the club, so I replaced him with another Turkish player, uh, Orkin Kaku. I got him from PSG. And then, as you see, I had a late free transfer transaction, so. But that's our transactions. Let's see how we did for the season. We won the Turkish League, but not as big a margin as usual. Look at Kasim Pasa finished third. For the second straight year, we did not win the Turkish Cup, losing the finals to Galatasaray. Villarreal beats Real Sociedad in the finals of Europa League in the all the Liga final. And I forgot to record the Europa League final last year. My fault. I didn't get it. But as you can see, Manchester United won the previous year Europa League since they were in the Super Cup, which we defeated them to take the title. And we were able to repeat as Champions League champions, winning 2-1 over Barcelona. We defeated Man U on the way there. Atletico Madrid. And Liverpool. We won our group over Man City, Real Sociedad, and Moscow. Here's a quick look at the stats. Look at this. Goalkeeper with a 98 with Andre Luna, and he's only 28. So if this was to continue, I'm sure he'd get 99. As you see all the stats there for this team. Even Visca, as you see, is retiring in this season, ending his long tenure with the club. Here's the stats on the scene. As you see, Holland with 34 goals leads the team. Is that fairly balanced scoring? But we didn't definitely didn't score as much as we normally did. So that's the end of this rebuild. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you've got a team you like to see done done, especially if it's outside the big five or six major leagues of Europe. It's always nice to do other teams. Somebody different. Somebody that other YouTubers don't do. Let me know. I do have a list of what you guys requested at the end of FIFA 20 last year. I just started off with this one because this I saw three or four requests for this on FIFA 20. I actually did have a FIFA 20 to get started but then some things personally came along and I got a little burned out so I took some time off to take care of some things so with FIFA 21 it does take a little longer to do each sim so I'm not sure if I can meet a weekly one but I will try doing the next one have it done for you somewhere around the first Monday of December so just let me know thanks guys